Okay, we're going to be looking at uh, chapter three now, uh, scientific measurement. The big thing with this section is a topic called significant digits or significant figures or sig figs, if you hear me say it. So significant figures or significant digits, what, what are they? What they do is the number of digits or figures in a measurement tell us how accurate it is. Uh, now the way that this works is any time a measurement is taken, what we need to do is we need to include every number that is known, and then we estimate one more place. So for instance, if I had a meter stick, and the only thing on the meter stick was that there was a marking at zero meters and a marking at one meter, and I was trying to measure something with that meter stick, um, there's not a lot of accuracy with that one. So I might estimate that something is 0.5 meters or 0.7 meters or 0.8 meters or 0.9 meters. That's the estimate uh, because I don't know exactly where it is in that range, but I can estimate it. And the what's going to happen is every time we deal with any measurement information either from a lab or from a problem we must take significant digits into account now what are the rules for significant digits so if i look at a number every number that is not a zero is a significant digit so that makes things easy right from the start everything that's not a zero automatically significant so for instance uh, here 24.7 0.743 714 all of those would have three significant figures because each has uh, three numbers that are not zero and one thing i want to point out the last digit that's significant in each of those that's the estimate so we can look at this and we can ask ourselves were these three measurements taken with the same instrument then how do we know that well if they're all taken with the same instrument they should be estimating the same place so if you look at that first number with 24.7 meters the seven the point seven that seven tenths is the estimate so that's saying we know it's 24 meters and we're estimating that point seven now look at the next one, 0.743 meters. Is the seven still the estimate? No, this point, the seven is known, the four is known. It's that three in the thousandths place. That's the estimate. So with that second measurement, we have a much more accurate um, measuring tool. And then with the 714 meters, is the seven the estimate? Um, the answer is no. We know it's at least 700 meters. We know it's 710 meters, and we're estimating the additional four meters on there. So again, that last significant digit is your estimate. Now here's where things start to uh, get funky. So if everything that's not a zero is significant, that means all the other rules have to do with zeros. So if I have a zero appearing between non-zeros, they are significant. Uh, this is called the sandwiched zero rule. So we see these numbers here. Each of those would have four significant digits or four significant figures. So in each case, they have two or three non-zero numbers, but zeros in the middle of numbers are significant. Always, every single time zeros in front that means to the left of non-zeros are never significant so let's take a look back at rule number one see that second number the 0 0.743 that zero in the front there not significant it's not significant because uh, um, it's not adding anything it's not adding any accuracy it's not saying that it's actually an amount zeros in front of numbers to the left not significant so for here I have uh, a couple numbers all of those would have two significant digits because 
all of them have two non-zero numbers and then um, zeros to the left. Okay, so we're still looking at zeros. Zeros at the end of a number are significant if there's a decimal present. That means we see the decimal. When I say at the end, I mean to the right of numbers. So for instance, each of these would have four significant digits. Uh, we'll kind of go through these one by one. So the four and the three, the 43, not zeros, significant. These zeros are to the right of numbers and there's a decimal present, so significant. The one and the one, not zeros, significant. This zero here, significant because it's a sandwiched zero. This zero here, significant because it's at the end of the number and there's a decimal present. The nine, significant, not a zero. These three zeros are significant because they are to the right of the number and there's a decimal present. Now, why do we worry about this? So in other words, what's the difference between 43.00 so 43.00, yes, I know that's terribly written, and 43 itself. Well, remember, the last significant digit that we see is the estimate. So by writing 43.00, this is telling us that this last place here, this hundredths place, is our estimate. So we are certain it's 43 meters, we are certain it's 43.0 meters, but we're estimating that hundredths place. Now if I just say 43 meters, now the 3 is our estimate. So I'm saying it's about 43 meters, so it could be 42 and a half, it could be 44. We don't know because that last digit is the estimate, so keep that in mind, that's the difference. So moving on. Kind of the counterpoint to this is that zeros at the end of a measurement, if there is no decimal place, are not significant. So here, like with the 300 meters, that would be one significant digit, just the three. 7,000, one significant digit, just the seven. And 27,210, those four numbers there would be significant. The zeros would not be. And again, What's the distinction here? What's this telling us? Again, the last significant digit that we see is the estimate. So when I say 300 meters like that, that's telling me that it's about 300 meters. That it could be anywhere from 250 to 349, really even beyond that. Could be even 400 meters. Could be 500 and we're just estimating the 300. That's what that's infer uh, telling us. Um, now, what's interesting is, let's say we're actually measuring something, and we were saying, okay, it's definitely the 300, we're estimating that one's place that that's the zero. How can I show that? We can add a decimal, and we see that down here at the bottom. So the difference between 300 point and 300 is the 300 point is three significant digits, the 300 is only one. So in the 300, we're estimating it's about 300. Emphasis on the three. Uh, with this one down here, the three is certain, the tens place is certain, we're estimating the ones place. So keep that in mind. Okay, almost done here. There are two places where a number can have unlimited amounts of significant digits. Remember, significant digits are about measurements. First is counting. If I count, actually count out 23 people, that would have unlimited significant figures because there's no estimation. So if something is counted, sig fig rules do not apply to it. Uh, or exactly to find things. So if I say there are 60 minutes to an hour, even though in the number 60 minutes would actually only be one significant digit, the one hour would only be one significant digit, that whole thing together would actually be infinite amount of significant digits. The rules don't apply to it because it's an exactly defined something. 60 minutes is exactly one hour. It's not an estimate. So now that we know how many significant uh, digits a number has, we want to focus on how do we work with it? Uh, what are, how do we calculate with it?
And this is kind of the guided rule that we see there that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. What that is telling us is that we cannot claim more accuracy than the numbers that go into it. That would be dishonest. So we need to round answers to the correct number of significant digits. So we're going to start with adding and subtracting. So when adding and subtracting, the basic idea here, this is a lot of words, is we pay attention to the number of decimal places shown. We're paying attention to the number of decimal places shown in the measurement. And we have to make sure that our answer matches the number of decimal the least number of decimal places shown in the measurements. So for example, here are three numbers. Now again, looking at these, we have to remember the last significant digit that we see is the estimate. So, 12.52, the 2 is the estimate, 349.0, the 0 is the estimate, 8.24, the 4 is the estimate. So when I add those together, because I'm adding, I look for decimal places. 12.52 has uh, two decimal places, 349.0 has one decimal place, 8.24 has two decimal places. So I keep in mind that my answer is only allowed how many decimal places? What's the least number of, um, that goes into it? One decimal place. So my answer is only allowed one decimal place. So I add them up in my calculator, and this is the answer that I get. This would not be an appropriate answer because I'm claiming too much accuracy. So I'm allowed, what? That's right, one decimal place. So that is my last place that I'm allowed, right there. Now, here's how you work with this. When we're rounding, we look one number past what we're allowed. So that seven is my last allowed digit. That tenths place, tenths place is what's allowed. So I look one digit past, and that's a six. If the next number is five or greater, we round up our last allowed place. If it's zero to four, we don't. So do I round in this case? Absolutely. And so we get 369.8. OK, multiplication and division. Uh, multiplication and division has a different but similar rule to adding and subtracting. When we are uh, multiplying and dividing, we still look at the numbers that go into it, but now we look at the number of significant figures, not the number of decimal places. So we're going for the fewest number of significant figures. So look at these two numbers here. So 7.55 meters and 0.34 meters. Those are two measurements. 7.55 has how many significant digits? Three. 0 0.34 has how many significant digits? Two. If you're not sure about that, look previous in this video. So when I multiply this, I need to round my answer off to the term so that has the fewest number of significant figures. So I'm matching the one that has less significant figures. So one has three, one has two. Last I checked, three was more than two. So two is how many significant digits I'm allowed. So again, I grab my calculator, and this is the number it spits out. I'm allowed two significant digits, so that two so that one's place and the tenths place is all I'm allowed. So I look one number past and only one number past and I see a six. So do I round the five up or do I keep it where it is? I round it up. And that's my answer.
Okay, so done with sig figs. We just have kind of a grab bag of some topics. So SI units, uh, SI stands for International System, it is a, the standard set upon, uh, agreed upon units that people around the world have agreed to work with. And then we ignore when it suits us. Generally, we're using the metric system. Um, that's really all you need to know. Temperature. There are three major temperature scales in play uh, at Earth, usually Celsius, Kelvin, and Fahrenheit. Um, we're not going to focus on Fahrenheit because it is a crazy space unit, but Celsius and Kelvin, you do need to know. Uh, specifically, you need to know how to convert from Celsius to Kelvin. Uh, use this equation. So your Kelvin is your number of Celsius plus 273, or Celsius is Kelvin minus 273. Pretty straightforward as things go. Finally, um, there's a calculation we'll see in labs called percent error. This just tells you kind of how 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 good you did your lab, how well. Um, the long and short of it is, you solve for your error. Error is the accepted value. Accepted value is the real true value minus the experimental value. The experimental value is what you found in your experiment. You subtract them, and you can see these bars here on the top of the equation. That means absolute value, so ignore any negatives. So you take abs accepted, subtract it from experimental, ignore any negatives. Then divide by accepted value. Again, that's the real value. Uh, and then multiply by 100%. Now, when I say multiply by 100%, I mean multiply by 100, then slap a percent sign on the end of it, and that gets you your percent error. Uh, 